Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First Officer Douglas Richardson here. Just to let you know, we're making our final approach now into what I am fairly sure is Fitton Airfield. <laughs> Unless it's a farm. <laughs> or just possibly the A45. <laughs> it's not the sea, because that's blue. I should perhaps explain that Captain Creef and I have a sportsmanlike little bet on today about who can fly the best after drinking a liter of vodka through a straw. <laughs> the captain went first. You may have noticed the takeoff run was a little bumpy, particularly over the golf course. <laughs> now it's me to land. Just as soon as I decide which of these two runways to aim for. <laughs> and I'm happy to tell you that I feel lucky. So, on behalf of all your crew today, may I just say, Geronimo! Cabin Pressure by John Finnamore, starring Stephanie Cole as Carolyn, Roger Allen as Douglas, Benedict Cumberbatch as Martin, and John Finnamore as Arthur. This week, Abu Dhabi. Blessed. Ah, yes, of course. May. Mm-hmm. Yep. Can't. Here we are, gents. Coffee with nothing in it, tea with everything in it. Great cabin address, Douglas. I love cargo flights. <laughs> Thank you, Arthur. Ooh, Eno. Ooh, Eno. Ooh, Eno. Ah, yes. Sewell. Oh, what are we playing? Brian's of Britain. <laughs> <laughs> there, there must be loads of them. Um... Ah... Uh... Well, not to worry, as they come to you. <laughs> oh, uh, who was that guy? Um, oh, grey hair, did that game show. Can I have a pee, please, Bob? Uh, what was his name? Your hope being that it was Brian? Yeah, Brian... Uh, Brian... Bob Holness. It was Bob Holness. That's it. Oh. <laughs> well, does he count anyway? Does Bob Holness count in our list of people called Brian? <laughs> What the hell? Yes, he does. <laughs> well done. Golf Tango, India. Expect 20 min delay due runway inspection. Enter the hold at Arden. Maintain 7,000 feet. Golf Tango, India. Roger, hold at Arden. Maintain 7,000 feet. Can you confirm delay only 20 minutes? <sighs> Probably. <laughs> all depends, really. Thank you, Tower. Hugely informative as ever. Out. Sorry, chaps. Looks like we better divert to Bristol. Bristol? Why? Fitton's got a runway closure. We'd have to hold for 20 minutes. But Bristol? That's miles away. Yes. Luckily enough, though, we're in an aeroplane. <laughs> Specially designed to be good at going miles away quite quickly. Yeah, but my car's at Fitton. Oh, well then, let us by all means circle round it until we drop out of the sky. Do you know, Martin, all these years and I've never been to Bristol. Well, get ready for a treat. I don't know. I was rather hoping not to break my duck. <laughs> Skipper, are you sure there's not enough fuel to wait? Because there's always a little bit left when the gauge shows red. Yes, oddly enough, Arthur, a jet aircraft isn't as precisely similar to a Vauxhall Corsa as a stupid person might imagine. We're going to Bristol. What do you reckon, Douglas? We could go to Bristol. I believe people do. <laughs> However, we've easily enough fuel spare to hold for 20 minutes, maybe even 30. No, I'm sorry, but we're diverting. Yeah, hang on a tick, though. If Douglas reckons 20 minutes... No, let's not hang on a tick. Let's listen to the captain, shall we? Of course, Martin. If you say we divert, then divert we shall. Thank you. Unless, of course, we were to smell smoke in the flight deck. What? I'm just saying, if by any remote chance we smelt smoke in the flight deck, we would of course be duty-bound to land at the nearest available airfield with immediate priority. In this case, by a happy coincidence, Fitton. Yes, maybe, but I don't smell smoke in the flight deck. <laughs> How about now? <laughs> suggesting, Douglas. We tell the tower we smell smoke, which we do. We get to land straight away. They check the aircraft, don't find anything, one of life's little mysteries, but jolly good boys for taking no chances. Everybody's happy and there's jam for tea. Right. That's, you know, that's really clever. No, I'm sorry, but absolutely not. I used to do it all the time at Air England. Well, you're not at Air England now. Where you are now is in the co-pilot seat and on the way to Bristol. You'll like it. They have a lovely suspension bridge. Well... <laughs> 
Shall I just satcom Carolyn before we make our final decision? It's rather an expensive diversion. No, we have made our final decision. I have decided, and as Carolyn knows, whilst in flight, I am supreme commander of this vessel. Golly. <laughs> Captain Bly flies again. Douglas, I'm not impressed by your Air England mates. When you're on Captain Bly's aircraft, you can do it his way, but when you're on mine, you do it mine. Is that understood? Yes. Yes what? Yes it is. Yes it is what? Yes it is understood. Yes it is understood what? Yes it is understood, please. <laughs> I'm waiting. Martin, you're not seriously asking me to call you sir. Yes I am. Why is that so hard to believe? Well, to select just one reason from the 15 or 16 that present themselves. <laughs> I'm old enough to be your father. Not unless you started very young. I did. <laughs> Right. Well, I think your age and your previous role is giving you a rather skewed view of the chain of authority on this aircraft. And maybe a little observation of the formalities will help remind you which one of us is still the captain. So, is that understood? Yes. <laughs> Sir. Thank you. Fit and approach, Golf Tango India. In view of your delay, request diversion Bristol. Martin, you're a Burke. I'm not a Burke, Carolyn. I'm an airline captain. Wrong on both counts. You're a colossal Burke, and you're not an airline captain. I don't have an airline. I have one jet. You cannot put one jet in a line. <laughs> if MJN is anything, it is an air dot. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, Carolyn, but I can't just magic up extra fuel. Yes, and I can't just magic up £7,000 to spend on you taking a scenic tour of the West Country. And where were you in all this, Douglas? Don't tell me you voluntarily went to Bristol. I did suggest an alternative plan to Sir, Carolyn, but Sir quite properly reminded me that Sir is in command. <laughs> and we should all obey Sir at all times. <laughs> Who reminded you? Captain Creef, or as I am privileged to call him, Sir. Martin, you are many things, but believe me, you are not Sir. If anyone is Sir, I am Sir. And as Sir, I am telling you, from now on, diversions are out. I see. So if an engine catches fire on takeoff, shrug shoulders, keep up a lip stiff, and press on for Portugal. Got it? All right, Biggles, you divert if something goes very, very seriously wrong. And I am talking, oh dear, surely we had two wings when we started wrong. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise you press on like a brave little soldier, and you stop treating my company as a bottomless money pit. That is completely unfair. Is that right? I tell you what, then. Why don't you explain to me why you had the cargo hold heated to 30 degrees all trip? Did we? Didn't you even know? Well, the thermostat's in the hold, you see, and... You are allowed to look in there when you do the walk round, you know. It's not secret. Do you know how much it costs to keep a large metal room toasty warm 30,000 feet up in the air? <laughs> it is surprisingly pricey. So listen, next Thursday you're going to Abu Dhabi and you're going cheap. You will fly the most no-frills, most cost-effective plane it is possible to fly. You will make EasyJet look like Air Force One. Understood? Yes, Carolyn. And who are the lucky passengers on Scrooge McDuck Air? <laughs> no passengers. Some oil exec has moved out there and we're bringing him everything he owns. Furniture, clothes, carpets, cat, the lot. All right, what time's the pickup? There's not going to be a pickup. What? Well, you remember that thing I said 15 seconds ago about no frills? Well, astonishingly, that's still in effect. <laughs> there will be no taxis. You get to my house at 6.30 and I'll drive you. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, Carolyn. You simply can't treat us like this. Fine. Then do by all means feel free to resign, Martin, and take a job with one of the many companies eager to sign up the only commercial pilot in the skies who took seven goes to get his license. Look, Carolyn, you cannot penalise me for taking a rational command decision based on reasonable air safety concerns. Yes, I can. Well, technically you can. Good. But... Then technically I will. Now please, go and be somewhere else. Well done, sir. <laughs> That's her told. Do you have coffee? Yes. Can I have the coffee without talking to you? Not really. Oh, come in, then. Here you go. 
Do you need a hand? Yes, pass me the shampoo and catch hold of this. Oh, no, good girl. Oh. <laughs> Who's going to be a lovely clean doggy? You know, my chats will be here soon, don't you? What time is it? 6.15. Oh, damn. What? I'm trying to train myself always to talk in 24-hour clock like Martin, but I keep forgetting. Well, what should you have said? Well, 6.15. <laughs> but not the 6.15 I was thinking of. You see... I was thinking of the one there's two of, but when you do it right, there should only be one. And what I was... Arthur, doing... Arthur, Arthur, light of my life, do please shut up. <laughs> right. Yes, sorry. Sorry, my, my. I'm just so excited about the trip. Arthur, you've been on hundreds of trips. Hasn't the novelty worn off a little? No, never. It's just always exciting. That amazing moment when 12 tons of metal leaves the earth. And no one knows why. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah, but, you know... Not really. <laughs> I mean, we know you need wings and engines and a sticky up bit on the end for some reason, but it's not like we actually know why a plane stays in the air. No. No, Arthur, we really do. <laughs> we, we do. We do know that. Oh. How then? Well, uh, because... Uh, will you give me that towel? <laughs> OK, OK, good doggy, keep still. <laughs> because... There are four forces acting on the plane. And so long as two of them are bigger than the other two, the plane flies. Mum, I don't mind that no one knows. <laughs> but we do. We do. That's it. What I said, that's how. Well, what are the four forces then? Yes. Well, I will tell you what they are. Lift, weight, uh, up and down? No, 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 no. Those, 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 those are up and down. No, it's lift, weight, Left and right. No, 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 no. Lift, weight... Engines? No, no. <laughs> well, yes, 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 sort of. Um, thrust, thrust. Lift, weight, thrust, and... Time. Drag. <laughs> Lift, weight, thrust, and drag. So, the weight and drag are overcome because the engines give the plane thrust and the wings give it lift. And that's how a plane flies. <sighs> how do the wings give it lift? What? The wings are really heavy. How does bolting two ginormous lumps of metal to a ginormous lump of metal give it a lift? Well, because they are wings. Well, they're like birds' wings. Yeah, but birds' wings flap. Ours don't flap. They've got flaps. But I once watched the flaps all the way to Stockholm, and take it from me, they are seriously misnamed. <laughs> so, so why does having wings make a plane lead the runway? Ah, oh, they're here. Now go and wait in the car with them. I need to clean my teeth. Yeah, but how do the wings... Answer the door. OK, I'm going, I'm going. There we are, snoop doop Who's a lovely clean girl? Oh, go free. Hi there, Douglas. Morning, Arthur. You're revoltingly chirpy for half six in the morning. Where's your mother? She's just brushing her teeth. She says to wait for her in the car. Um, where's Martin? Who can predict the movements of the Supreme Commander? <laughs> Perhaps God wanted to pick his brains about something. How do you mean? Never mind. Ah! But what's this? Who is this commanding presence hoving into view? Can it be Sir? It can. Morning. Greetings, oh Sir. Don't call me Sir, Douglas. Sir's mind is fickle and changeable. <laughs> I shall endeavour to remember, sir, but from time to time my natural awe at the majestic figure <laughs> cut by sir may bubble up uncontrollably. And Thank you, Douglas. Truly, you are an hilarious pilot. Where's Carolyn? Sharpening her teeth. Brushing. <laughs> Brushing her teeth, yes, sorry. Well, in you get then, sir of sirs. You're letting the cold in. I can't. You're in my seat. Your seat? You have a seat? Yes. In Carolyn's car? The front seat is my seat. What? Did you call shotgun? <laughs> I don't need to call shotgun. I'm the captain. The captain gets the front seat in the aircraft, Martin, because he's driving it. <laughs> Not in any vehicle he happens to be in. I always sit in the front seat in the taxi. Only because the taxi goes to your house first. This time, I got here first. And so here I am. Voila. Tell you what, if it makes it easier, I could go in the front. Shut, Shut up, up, Arthur. Arthur. <laughs> Douglas, I've got to do the briefing. How am I supposed to give the briefing from the back seat? I'll still be able to hear you. I'll be in the same car and everything. 
And my legs are longer, yards longer. But I don't... Oh, all right. I'll toss you for it. Hey, no, that's not fair. You know about me and coin tosses. Heads or tails? Oh, bloody hell. Tails, then. Oh, that's odd. Did I win? Did I actually win? That never happens. That's the first time in a run of about 500. Just get on with it. Oh, now, that is nice. Comfy. Ah. <laughs> now listen up, chaps. Here's the briefing. Fairly straightforward. Weather's good. Clear skies expected at Abu Dhabi. Our alternate is Dubai. I'll operate out. Douglas, you operate back. Trust that's all clear? Aye, aye, Captain Ahab. <laughs> I suppose he's a friend of Captain Bly, is he? The three of you should go for a drink sometime. OK, team useless. We're late. But that's because you were... Shut up and listen. Here's your briefing. Douglas will operate out. Martin back. Clear skies at Abu Dhabi. Your alternate is Bahrain. Carolyn, I've already no, done... No, really. The... Shut up and listen. Alternate Bahrain. But, of course, you don't need an alternate. Because today's the day we try running MJN as a profitable business, rather than a charitable sanctuary for rubbish pilots. <laughs> uh, oh, no, wait, wait, wait a minute. Martin, swap seats with Douglas. What? He's too tall, I can't see out of the back window. Oh, come on, chop, chop. I don't believe I am it. going to count to one. <laughs> one. Look at all this lot. Carpets, vases, and a storage heater. Why would you want a storage heater in Abu Dhabi? Well, there is a lot of heat to store. <laughs> right, we're done. Arthur, we're done. Come on, Skipper. What are you doing back there? I'm just trying to soothe the cat. <laughs> Ow! God, what happened? I failed. <laughs> Good heavens, are you all right? I think so. He's sweet, really. He was just playing. At what, being a leopard? <laughs> I wouldn't have thought he could get his paw through the bars. Nor did I. He really can, though. Do you want to go and sew yourself back together? No, I I'm fine. Ish. Are, are we done? It seems so. And now it's back to the boring old plane flying. Oh, yes, about that. Um, I wanted to ask you something, Skipper. Mum was telling me this morning that planes fly because they've got wings. Is there anything that woman doesn't know? <laughs> but she didn't really explain why the wings lift us up. Ah, well, essentially... Uh, Douglas, it... he asked me. Listen carefully, Arthur. The wing is curved on top, but flat on the bottom. When it meets the air, it splits it in two. The air that goes over the top has further to go, so it has to go faster to keep up with the air underneath. That reduces the pressure above the wing giving us lift. Ah, fantastic. Thanks, Skipper. I, I totally get it now. You're welcome. Except, why does it have to? Why does what what? Why does the air on the top have to keep up with the air on the bottom? Why don't they just split up? <laughs> For the sake of the kids? <laughs> Fuel system checked. Checked. Hydraulics checked. Checked. Transponder checked. Like a picnic tablecloth. In general, plane not broken? Plane, so far as one can tell, not broken. Great. <laughs> I'll go and do the walk around then. Not forgetting, of course, to check that the cargo hold temperature... No, obviously not forgetting that. Douglas, do I have to remind you again who's in command? Could it by any chance be you, Captain Queeg? Queeg? You're just making them up now. <laughs> Bonjour, go Tango India, maintain 340, direct Châtillon. May we, mon ami. <laughs> Out. Post takeoff checks complete, Douglas? Thank you, Captain. Perkins. Oh, knock it off, Douglas. Knock what off? Yes, all right, I've never heard of Captain Perkins. Happy now? You win again in the game of referencing fictional captains I don't recognise. But, you know, that's because instead of reading The Adventures of Captain Perkins in my punt at Eton College, Oxford, <laughs> I was rereading Principles of Climatology for Pilots and underlining bits in red. All right? All right. Feel better? Yes. Good. I said, thank you, Captain Perkins. Brian Perkins. <laughs> Oh, right. Hanrahan. Want you serve, gents? Ah, excellent. What have we today? Oh, heaps of deliciousness. I spent hours on it. Arthur, I very much hope that you mean by that that you spent hours removing the lids from our delicious catered food. Which, to be fair, we are perfectly prepared to imagine of you. Okay. Uh, you see, 
The caterers were one of the things Mum thought we could tighten our belt around. She thought that with me not having terribly much to do on cargo flights, I could try my hand at doing the meals. Did she? Did she really? And what have you prepared? Well, uh, two separate meals as per. For someone, this. My God. <laughs> I call it my orange platter. Really? I wonder why. Oh, because everything in it. Yes, Arthur, I can see why. <laughs> What makes the mashed potato orange? Cooking it in the same saucepan I used to curry the baked beans. And the other option? Ah, my signature dish. Behold, surprising rice. <laughs> Good Lord. What are those bits? Ah, you see, Skipper, if you don't mind me saying so, that question is entirely against the spirit of surprising rice. <laughs> Arthur, you're aware the point of giving us separate meals is so that we can't both get food poisoning. <laughs> There's really not much point if you're just going to poison us in two different ways. Oh, come on, chaps. I tried my hardest, you know. That's what we're afraid of. Arthur, sorry, but please take these away, humanely destroy them, and see if there's anything edible on the plane. Douglas, Satcom, please. <coughs> Carolyn, what the hell are you trying to do? What's the matter? Has Arthur told you about the accommodation already? I told him to wait till you landed. What? No? <laughs> what about the accommodation? Oh, nothing, nothing. You love it. It has old world Bedouin charm. <laughs> what did you want, then? The food, Carolyn. We're skilled professionals doing a difficult and dangerous job. We need proper catering. Skilled professionals don't go to Bristol. Ask anyone. Skilled <laughs> professionals don't forget to check the cargo hold heating. Speaking of which, did you check it? Yes, yes, of course I did. How could I forget with everyone reminding me twice a minute? I checked it before the walk round, and I checked it after the walk round, and it was definitely, definitely off. On. What? Sir means on, naturally. It was on. Whoops, must go now, Karen. Here comes a mountain. Cheerio. <laughs> Douglas, is this some half-baked revenge attempt? Because if so, it's really pointless. Why would she believe I deliberately turned it on? Why, indeed. But I had this sort of feeling you might hope she did, what with the cat in the hold and all. Oh, God. <laughs> Precisely. I did try to remind you. Oh, God. Yes. Do you think it's dead? No, no, definitely not. Not yet. Oh, God. Probably feeling the chill, though. <laughs> what flight time have you got? A little under eight hours. How long can a cat survive in an unheated hole at 34,000 feet? Oh, I used to know this one. <laughs> it's always coming up in pub quizzes. <laughs> yes, all right. Now then, is it three hours and 28 seconds, or is that a weasel in a submarine? <laughs> don't know. I regret not, but I wouldn't hold out too much hope for the answer being eight hours. Oh, God. I'm going to have to kill the client's cat. It's looking that way. I can't kill the client's cat. That's also true. Well, what else can I do? I suppose you could always... I can't. I can't divert. She'll hunt me down. She'll actually hunt me down with knives. Whereas if we carry on and freeze the client's cat to death? Also knives. <laughs> Big knives. If we... If we did carry on and the cats didn't make it, do you think they'd be able to tell how it died? Again, I fear you flatter my knowledge of cat pathology. <laughs> I don't see how they could. I mean, it's not as if it's going to freeze into a block of ice, is it? Not unless it's a cartoon cat, no. <laughs> I mean, it's not as if the cat CSI is going to descend on us. I wouldn't have thought so. They're so busy these days. <laughs> I mean, I know it's a bit rotten for the cat, but £10,000 to divert is quite a lot, isn't it? A fair bit. And Carolyn? And the knives, yes. So, what do you think? Is that reasonable? That's reasonable, isn't it? Isn't it? It's a command decision, sir. All yours. Right, I found some biscuits and some strepsils. Who wants what? <laughs> I think we can probably risk both having the biscuits. Skipper, are you all right? Yes. Are you sure? You're a sort of grey colour. And you didn't even try the surprising rice. <laughs> I'm fine. No, really, it's something... Arthur, you were asking why the air over the wing has to keep up with the air underneath. Oh, yes, do you know? Indeed I do. Attend. 
The air is not passing over the wing, the wing is passing through the air. So, the curved upper side stretches the air forced over it apart, reducing pressure, producing lift. The lift pushes up, the weight pushes down. So as long as the lift is more than the weight, up we go. And that, my friend, is how an aeroplane flies. Got it! Right, yes, crack it! I completely get it now. Good. You see, it's actually quite easy to grasp when it's explained properly by someone who understands. So that's why planes can't fly upside down. <laughs> uh, yes, they can. Can they? Well, of course they can. Haven't you seen the red arrows? But doesn't that mean the curved side of the wing is on the bottom, so the lift is pushing down, as well as the weight? How does that work? <laughs> yes, Douglas. How does that work? Well, Arthur, there's a very simple explanation. But just to finish what we were saying, Martin, I think it's entirely up to you whether you let the cat in the hold freeze to death. What? Douglas! <laughs> Skipper! No one wants to hear the explanation. What a shame. Why? Why would you do that? I'm not doing that on purpose, Arthur. Then why are you doing it at all? It seems the cargo hold heating may not have been turned on. Masterly use of the passive voice. But, Skipper, it's really cold as high up as this. Yes, thank you, Professor Science. So we should turn the heating on? Yes. Yes, okay, good idea. You could do it. Just climb out over the wing, wrench open the whole door, swing yourself in and adjust the thermostat. Okay. How will I recognize... Not really! <laughs> oh, oh, I've got an idea. We could divert. If we landed now, the cat might be okay. Well done, Arthur. Why didn't we think of that, Martin? Arthur, I know he's a lovely cat, but it... It costs thousands and thousands of pounds to divert. And you remember your mother and her thoughts about that? Right. Yes. You know, it's just a sweet little pussy cat. It's not! It's a crazed psycho cat! Look at yourself, Arthur! You have open wounds! <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose so, but it's gonna get really cold and, you know, die. So, you want me to divert, is that it? You want me to ditch in Nowheresville, Normandy? You want me to tell Carolyn I do have the absolutely cast-iron excuse she demanded for diverting, and it goes meow. <laughs> yes, please. All right, fine, fine, all right. It's only a job, there'll be other jobs. France Control, this is Golf Tango India. Request immediate diversion to nearest airfield. Roger, Golf Tango India, do you have an emergency? Well, we've got... One moment, please, Tower. What is it, Douglas? Captain. I do believe I can smell smoke in the flight deck. Can you smell smoke in the flight deck, Captain? Yes. Yes, I can, Douglas. Could you request an immediate diversion, please? Certainly, sir. That was Cabin Pressure by John Finnamore. It starred Stephanie Cole as Carolyn, Roger Allen as Douglas, Benedict Cumberbatch as Martin, and John Finnamore as Arthur. It also featured Ewan McIntosh as Carl, the producer was David Tyler, and the programme was a positive production for the BBC.